Hello and welcome to my channel if you're new and if you're not new then welcome back. This is the start of a very exciting kind of long-term project that I'm going to be working on. Um, it's going to be a several part series video, probably like four or five parts. I'm not really sure. But as you can tell from the title of this video, I am going to start my second recreation of the Mary Poppins Jolly Holiday dress. I've tried to steer clear from doing like remakes of things I've already made. I've remade Belle's dress a couple times and I've remade made the cartoon Cinderella dress once because the first time I did it, it was so bad. And that's kind of similar for the Mary Poppins dress. The first time I did it, it was the, I want to say it was the fourth dress I ever made, like ever. And so obviously it's not perfect. I think it's actually amazing considering it was my fourth dress, but looking back at it, it just, it's not the best. And this dress from Mary Poppins is, I'd have to say like my favorite movie costume ever that I can think of. Like if I could have any dress, any costume from anything, from any media, it would be this dress. I think it's so beautiful, elegant, I love it so much. I've actually been studying it. I found almost any information you can find on this dress. Like I can't find any other info. And it's sad because there's actually not a lot out there about this dress since it is quite old. But anyway, I'm talking way too much. I am going to recreate it. And this time I want it to be as perfect as possible. I want it to be like, I just want it to be a reproduction almost. I want it to look good. With that said, welcome to part one of making Mary Poppins Jolly Holiday dress. And today we're starting with the petticoat. I'd like to thank Native for being the sponsor of today's video. With Native's best seller pack, you can enjoy every part of your shower with their body wash, deodorant, and deo and body spray. Plus their products are clean, simple, and effective and will keep you smelling good all day long. Native has a huge range of scents to please anyone. From the sweetness of vanilla to the beachiness of coconut, or the calming salty breeze with sea salt and cedar. If you'd like something sweeter, you can enjoy the fruitiness of sweet peach and nectar. Whatever scent combination you can think of, they probably have it with special limited editions coming out all of the time. The first product I receive is Native's classic deodorant. I got the scent Lavender and Rose, and it just is that classic perfect lavender scent to me. It just smells so good. And what I love about their classic deodorant is that it provides up to 72 hours of odor protection and it isn't sticky and feels dry while applying. I also received Native's body wash in the scent vanilla and cactus flower. The body wash has clean and simple ingredients that are easy to understand and they're naturally derived to help cleanse your skin. Not only does it smell amazing, but it leaves your skin feeling soft and hydrated and it froths into a luxurious lather that I absolutely adore. For the deodorant and body spray, I chose the scent Eucalyptus and Mint. It is the nicest, freshest scent, very minty. It makes me just feel fresh when I apply it. It's super easy to apply and it's vegan and cruelty free. And not only can you use it for odor protection, but you can just use it as an all around fragrance spray as well. Get the best sellers pack today. Normally it's $36, but if you use my link and code Alexandra L at checkout, you can get the body wash, deodorant, and deo and body spray for only $24. And that's a 33% save, which is 100% worth it. Thank you again to Native for sponsoring today's video and now it's time to finally start on my petticoat. The reason I'm doing this in multiple parts is just because I want to go into depth about how I'm making this. Um, for you guys to see and just for my own posterity, I am super excited about it and I want to do everything right. Now the original dress was made all with silk and while I would love to be able to do that, I just simply cannot afford all of that silk. So I bought silk or um, silk chiffon for the outer layer of the dress, but everything else unfortunately does need to be polyester just because I can't afford it. So that brings me to the petticoat. I found a couple great pictures of the ruffles of the petticoat and you'll notice I've watched the Jolly Holiday sequence like probably 10 times already in the past couple weeks while I've been studying. And the petticoat, I love all of the colors in it. It's not just red, it's like pink, it's orange, red, all of these ruffles with all of this lace trim. And it's so beautiful. So I ordered from Fabric Wholesale Direct what I think will be the perfect color combination or at least as perfect as I can get it without dyeing it myself. And here it is. I ordered several yards of the sheer voile. I think that's how you say it, voile. And then I have a few yards of organza as well. Um, I have these colors. I kind of have a peachy color, a couple pinks, and some orange. And I think all together this is going to be as close as possible to the original petticoat. So we're going to start with this today. I bought like probably 10 yards 
worth of fabric in total for the petticoat and hopefully it will be enough and i'm going to try to remember to put all the pictures i found i wish i could put video clips maybe i can i don't know if it would get demonetized okay i'm talking too much let's make the dress i found the packing slip if you guys want to know the exact fabric i got aside from the matte satin on the top i bought that just as a placeholder for the red corset material in case I can't get anything better. But the rest of this list is gonna be for the petticoat. You'll see that I got three yards of organza and the rest of it is that voile. And the voile is extra long, it's 118 inches wide. So that really helps with yardage amount because it's double the width that normal fabric would be. Um, and I really like this material, I work with it a lot. So if you want to make this with me, this is what I got and I'm hoping it'll work. Here's what my game plan is gonna be for this petticoat. I don't have like a full plan, but I've made enough petticoats to kind of know what I'm gonna do. So I bought, I have all of the colored stuff. So all of this right here. And then I also bought a few yards of white, I think, because the ruffles in the petticoat are just colors. I don't think there's any white in there. So I'm gonna use the white for the part of the skirt that the ruffles are going to attach to. And then these are just gonna be all ruffles. I might make a couple skirts out of these two because it looks like there's a lot of ruffles on the skirt but i feel like it's going to build up quickly i don't think it's going to need like a live action cinderella amount of ruffles obviously but i need to cut i think i'm gonna cut out the ruffles first and then you'll notice also on the end of on the hem of each ruffle there is some lace on there and i actually have what i need for that too okay i'm gonna bring you back down here so i can sit and show this to you so a family friend of mine about honestly it was so long ago at this point like probably at least six months at least came over and had all of these lace trims to give me because she didn't need them um like there's a ton of lace in here a ton and so it's gonna be perfect for trimming the hems of this skirt because I was kind of nervous it was gonna be very costly, but there's so much variation. Like this whole bolt of this lace, there's like, like look in here. It's, there's so much lace I can't even describe. Like so much lace. Um, so this is what all the stuff I'm gonna use for the hem of the ruffles. So I think what I'm gonna do is cut out the ruffles. Like, look, it just keeps coming. There's so much in here. I'm gonna go cut out the ruffles and then hem them and add the lace to all of them. Like, there's just infinite. Like, this bag is still, look, all of this, so much stuff. Like, I don't even think I'll be able to use all of this in my lifetime. Luckily, a big bulk of it is gonna be be used for the petticoat. But I'm putting this to the side for now because I don't need it quite yet. I just need to cut the ruffles. I need to figure out how long I want the ruffles to be because I think the skirt is gonna be a little over 30 inches long, probably around 32, 33 inches. That'd be my guess. So we'll do some math. I cut two strips of the pink shade with the width of it, each 10 inches long. So it's like that. And I'm surging the bottom of it before I add the lace so that it's not gonna fray. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do yet. I'm just making the ruffles and then we'll figure out how to divide them up. First two ruffles done and they're looking so good. The colors are literally perfect. They're looking so good. So what I have done, and I'll take you through the process several more times because clearly I have to do it a lot more times. For each one, they're the 10 inch strips. And the first thing I do is surge one end of the 10 inch strip. And then I take it over to my machine and I sew on the lace trim onto the side that is surged. So it's like that. And then I go up and I set my tension all the way up to high on my machine and I make it a basting stitch and I just sew all the way down the opposite end so that it ruffles up. So I did that with this one and this one. And basically I think I'm just gonna keep doing this. it looks really good. The bad news is that it's building up way quicker than I thought it was. I am working on it right now and I have like I think five layers of ruffles so far and it's already very puffy and I'm trying to figure out what to do about it because I need more than five layers and I don't like the shape it's taking on. It's looking kind of funny and I've been brainstorming what to do to fix it so I will show you what it looks like. Right now there's two skirts attached to this so the underskirt has is this and it has these two layers and then the overskirt has three layers and the colors are perfect and it's kind of it's like already puffy. Let me show you underneath. This is exactly what I needed like this is beautiful but I think the issue is that 
the laces that I'm using, look at, there's like all of these laces, but they're super stiff. They need to like soften out so that, uh, this needs to just be more flowy. Right now it's very stiff because of the hemming of the lace. And so what I've been doing, I'm using my um, steamer and I'm trying to steam all of these to hopefully get them to flatten out a little. Cause right now you see how it like, the layers puff out a lot. I need it to be more flat, more just like that so that I can have more layers of this. And if that doesn't work, then I'm gonna just make a few more layers and I'm gonna wash it when the whole thing is done. Because I think if I use a lot of fabric softener that all of this lace will hopefully soften out. Welcome back to day three of making this petticoat. It's right behind me. As you can see, it's very poofy, a little bit too poofy. I'm trying to decide what to do about that because I still have more layers to go, but it looks not the best. I do not know what to do. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm gonna make probably maybe one more layer and then add that on and then I'm going to finish this. And once it's all sewn together and finished, we're gonna throw in the wash to see if hopefully this will be less stiff. The absolute explosion that has come out of this petticoat is crazy. I'm gonna have to do a huge clean when this is done. I believe this last, this layer right here is gonna be the last one. There's a ton of fluff in here and the waistband's getting a little thick. So I'm going to sew on this top skirt and then I think it will be ready to add a waistband. Now, some of you might be wondering why I decided to do all of this with rectangles instead of attaching ruffles to the circle skirt. And the problem is that this stuff stretches out a lot on the bias and it would have just been in a huge nightmare to let it stretch out and then add the ruffles and even once I did add the ruffles it would have stretched out more and then it would have been a huge headache to hem everything and make it even so making rectangles on the straight grain just made it so that there's not going to be any stretching that just means that it's really poofy at the waist which I don't want it to be but we can figure it out since you're not going to see this waistband I went with a nice bright red because it's Mary Poppins duh look at all of this fluff it actually looks really good I'm sewing up the last layer of this right now and then it's basically done it needs a Class. Okay guys, I finished, Alexa, turn it down. Alexa, turn it down. Okay guys, I finished the petticoat. Let me go get it and show it to you. I am very proud with how it turned out. I think it is going to look so good and it's just perfect. So here it is. I love the bright red waistband and there's a hook and eye on there. And then we've got the fluff going on. And I will put it on to show you what it looks like. Look at that. I took a few of the layers out of it. Um, it was incredibly poofy and it was kind of the wrong shape. So I took some of the ruffle layers out. Now I'm a little worried that it's not poofy enough. If that's the case, um, I could easily add in some tool or something when it's all said and done, but I think it should be good. I like how it looks. Um, before I put it on for you guys though, I want to also talk about something I'm quite annoyed about. So this is like my favorite dress ever. I've told you guys this and I want it to look perfect. And so I really want Mary Poppins shoes. And I don't know if you guys know this, you cannot buy Mary Poppins shoes anywhere. I promise I've scoured the internet. Please comment down below if you know where I can buy some. I don't want spats. I don't want to sew fabric spats. I want the shoes because she had real shoes. I have many pictures of them. He were stop. And so this is the only thing I can think of. When I was little, yes, I was a theater kid. And yes, I was a Mary Poppins. I was Jane Banks. If you want this choice of these are my Jane Banks shoes from, gosh, how long ago was it? It was when I was in seventh grade, like eight years ago. Something like that. So, and, and my feet haven't grown since. I've been a size seven shoe for, since I was fifth grade. So I have my stage shoes. I will not ruin these. These are like an artifact to me. They're incredibly special and they're very beat up because I wore them for a ton of shows and rehearsals and stuff. But. I just need something like this, but the black parts need to be pink. And there's nowhere in anywhere to buy them. And I'm kind of on a strict budget right now. So I know like American Duchess has some like authentic looking ones where, cause these are snaps. American Duchess has ones that are actually the buttons. They don't come in pink, but I was thinking I could like paint them or something, but I can't afford those cause they're like 300 bucks. Um, these are only about $50 though. So I was thinking I might 
buy another pair of these and turn the black into pink. Um, but yeah, I would love to get some input. If you guys have any ideas, comment and let me know where you think you could tell me where to find Mary Poppins shoes because they are whimsical and they need to be with it. But to show you the petticoat today, I'm gonna put these on so that you can kind of get the effect. I'm very, very proud of it. I said at the beginning of this that I wanted to recreate it the best I could, and I think that's what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm very, very proud of this. And stay tuned for part two. I'm not sure when it will be coming out, but I'm going to make the slip. And I cannot wait to share more of this project with you. So subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment, leave a like, and I will see you next time. And thank you again to Native for sponsoring this video. Please go check out that link, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you.